What's up everybody? Yashua here from You Enjoy Life and greetings from Colorado, one of my favorite places in the world. I've been living with my friend for a while now and I'm helping him convert his two acre property, which is on a mountainside, so it's been wild, into a gigantic food forest. I'm learning so much every day, um, cooking pretty much all of our own food, foraging a lot of stuff, and just feeling like super nourished by the land. Um, but I've been traveling around the world for a long time and cooking and, and, and learning about growing in all kinds of weird and wacky and different types of situations. And what I've come to see is that no matter what situation you're in right now, whether you have a lot of property and you've never grown food or you have a farm um, or you have a tiny little apartment with a small kitchen and maybe you're sprouting some lentils you know, on the, on the kitchen counter, you can find a way to get more connected to the foods that you cook and the foods that you eat. Rather than getting caught up in comparing yourself to I wish I had this or I had that, just make small changes right now. Start cooking more meals, getting more connected to your food, and over time your life will radically shift. So recently a friend of ours named Stuart's been visiting, and Stuart's been living out of his van, and he's just been kind of struggling to make good meals. You know, he's got a very tiny compact space and just an instant pot. So I wanted to get together with Stuart and see if I could help him out a bit. So I've been living out of this thing for about three months. Um, How's it been going? It's been going really well. Yeah, it's been really intense. So like, there's there's an, an adaptation process that we have to go through when we start to live in nature. Um, it took me about 30 days to really kind of get settled and like figure out my routine, which was like radically, radically distant changed because now it's like every time I go to the bathroom, every time I, you know, do every, everything, my whole system, my processes have all changed basically. Uh, what about food specifically? Because I want to help yeah. you like you know mm -hmm. feel comfortable cooking. Mm -hmm. So food is like. So food, I've figured out a system, the instant pot right there and the battery, I can do one, as long as I'm off the grid, so I can go off the grid and on the grid. Uh, when I'm on the grid, I can just go with the instant pot every day, every meal I can cook it out of that. Coolest thing is little cleanup. Uh, so I try to do things as simple as possible. So I get uh, frozen vegetables uh, and I throw them in the instant pot, I steam them, uh, and then I put a pre-made sauce, uh, sauce and then I only use one sauce at a time because I have to refrigerate it after I open it. Yeah, so for me it's really about just taking what you already have and just like adding a little accentuation because as you know like food is a integral part in life, right? But what I find is like when you're just adding those little things and just kind of like putting in your own love into it and just like little moments of excitement that it just makes the meal feel more fun. So instead of just having steamed vegetables, you add like a certain spice or like, you know, you steam an egg in there at the same time and then you come out with this pot and then you top it with sauerkraut and like sprouts or something and all of a sudden it feels like this whole complete meal, not just like something but simple. It's still, and it's still simple though. It's still really simple. Yeah. yeah, the goal for me is to like not add to Change your cleanup yeah, essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. just still yeah. all in one pot. So what I was thinking is we could actually steam the egg Oh, take a interesting. bell pepper okay. and actually cut it in half uh -huh. and then crack an egg in each side and then you'll steam, you get pepper steamed and the egg steamed. But I also made uh, this, this steam <laughs> This is for you. Um, and you were saying that black pepper and uh, turmeric, yeah. why do you want to eat more of that? Uh, so turmeric is helpful for inflammation and, and uh, assume chronic pain and then uh, turmeric mixed with black pepper, uh, the black pepper activates the turmeric. Uh, mm. well, so what I've got here, I'm actually making a homemade spice blend. Just to spice things up a little bit. But it's basically black pepper, garlic powder, um, some cumin, coriander. I'm gonna add some turmeric. So I'm gonna make a spice blend that tastes really good, that has a lot of flavor, that also has the things that he wants in it. And what's cool about spice blends is they'll last a long time, and you can just kind of sprinkle them in your food and have a little extra flavor. Mm. You might sneeze, I'm about to sneeze. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just something you can sprinkle on anything if you're making veggies, you can do it fresh, you can do it you know, before, or you cook it, whatever you want. I find adding those little elements of cooking uh, just make it more fun and kind of create more of a connection to food because to me food is like really about the connection we have and to it. And the creativity as well. The creativity and the energy behind it. So uh, I always say like use the best that you can. Don't like obsess. If you can't afford organic or you don't know how to grow your own food, it's like just take small little steps to getting more connected to the food that you're making and then over time it will just grow and grow and grow and grow. You know? Let's, uh, let's have some fun. So I'll cut this in half. And this is, you know, a little bit of an experiment. I feel good about it, but there's always an experimentation of food. There's a little fun element, kind of like play. So I'm just gonna kind of remove the seeds out on both sides. Of course, this is something you can always compost. Uh -huh. If you're buying organic veggies, what's also cool is you can literally take the seeds and you can plant them, you know? Um, so there's all these little things. Also, when you start to learn more about foraging, you can go out and find wild greens and then just add that to you. That'd be very cool. So this here is a wax currant tree. And what's cool is they will eventually become edible berries, but before they're berries, you can actually eat these flowers. So that would make a really delicious, nutritious sort of 
garnish, a wild garnish that you can throw on. Another favorite green of mine to forage is lamb's quarter, and you can see it right here. It grows like a weed, it's considered a weed, but it's like a wild spinach, and it's very delicious and easy to identify. Just, just crack one right in there. Oh, the salt jags, beautiful. Um, and then let's use the stew blend. So that's for you, you can take around and kind of do whatever you want with. And Thank you. Eggs, it works really well on. Very interesting. A little bit of that, nice. Oh so, God, so, so we lower the eggs in. But we're not done. So let's take some Brussels sprouts and maybe uh, we'll just kind of have them. Okay. Right? So we're gonna steam everything all together in there. Okay. And what about overcooking? Um, overcooking. Things. If you overcook something, yeah. uh, one way to think about vegetables is kind of the opposite of meat. So okay. your meat starts out soft, and when you cook it, it gets you know more and more firm. Vegetables are the opposite, so they have their own tenderness. So you might say like I want to have a medium rare steak. It's similar to vegetables. As you cook the Brussels sprouts, they'll get softer and softer, mm -hmm. and you just find the point you like. There is no right, there's no perfect. When it comes to cooking, it's all about preference and experience. And making mistakes is just part of it. Yeah. You make a mistake and then you learn something new. You don't see it as a you failure. You can still eat it. Yeah, yeah, you can still eat it. Like I like to make a lot of things. Sometimes I make something that didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but it turns into something else because I made a mistake and then I have to kind of go forward and figure out what do I do next, you know? And then, yeah, let's just pop on the lid and uh, this magic thing do its work. And then steam for about a minute, I would say? No, we're actually gonna steam for about Six minutes. Oh wow! So you, how long do you usually steam your veggies? One. One minute. Yeah, yeah. Huh? and then I leave it in. And then I yeah, leave it let it. Till, yeah. yeah. Let's do six minutes. Okay. So that should cook the eggs, yeah. and then uh, turn it on, oh, and yeah. it's good. Yep. So, all right. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then we wait. Next to the sour a couple things I, I uh, brought to help out. This is a little seed mix that I made that you can take and it's just got like quinoa, chia, um, you can put like sesame seeds in there, there's sunflower seeds and just little things to add nutrients and, and seeds. Yeah, you can mix and match. You can sprout a lot of that stuff as well. Um, but you can just kind of sprinkle it on like salads and things and it adds crunch and just adds a lot of good nutrients. All right, release the steam. Ah. My favorite spot. I do the reveal, let's see. See if it works. Yeah. You never know, it's like a magic trick. Uh, should I explain the uh, the pollen on there? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Look at that. Yeah, oh yeah. So you could even steam them less if you wanted to have them like runny. Uh, okay. Uh, but this way they're cooking. Do you think they're, they're, if I poke them, would, there, would the yolk come out? I don't, I think the yolk is like more of a, way. yeah, it's all yeah. cooked all the way, but you have options to play around with. You can oh, try okay. like, what happens when I do it for three minutes and probably uh, more of a soft boiled yeah, egg. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh man, we lost one. Everything's a little bit slower in a van, right? You just gotta move a little bit slower, a little more patience. Absolutely. Patience is something I've learned a lot about in the last few months. Yeah, what I would personally do for something like this is you can take some sauerkraut. You like sauerkraut? Mm, I do, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can kind of like plate it. Plating is fun. To me, food is like impermanence. It's like the art of impermanence. Uh -huh. You spend all this time doing something, putting love into it, and then the destroying, the impermanence of it is the eating of it, the letting go. You know, not holding on to it, but enjoying the moment, being present in the cooking process. Mm -hmm. And then you get to eat and enjoy it. It's crazy because it slows down time as well. It really does slow yeah. down time. So then you can rip off like a little bit of sprouts just right on top. You know, sprinkle them. Even if like there's a little bit of, I'll get that out, but a little bit of dirt never hurt no one. <laughs> okay, and then just for like a little added bonus, mm -hmm. some crunch, you can sprinkle this on. And then suddenly you go from just like eating just steamed veggies to having this whole kind of masterpiece, right? Of just magic and everything's really simple, mostly raw stuff like with the sauerkraut and the sprouts. You're adding just like raw elements that are gonna stay for a while. Things that are dried um, or things that are just like preserved really well. And this is the key challenge of our van life is essentially how to get fresh food um, and also have enough food to last for a long time. To last, yes. Yep. So this, I, I'm glad we've hopefully hit your challenge. <laughs> Little egg pocket. Look. Good, cooked all right. Mm -hmm. 
craziest thing is just you put intention to it, food tastes so much better. It really is. Like, I honestly think love is the number one ingredient to any cooking. So even if you have a van, you don't have many supplies, just mm -hmm. basic things, a little bit of intention, some love, good ingredients, and you'll be happy. I hope that you got a lot out of that video and are inspired to eat healthier and cook more sustainably. If you did, make sure to subscribe to Yashua's channel. The links are in the description to follow him. And make sure to subscribe to this channel if you're not already, where there are many more educational and inspirational videos to come. I love you all very much and see you again real soon.